Okay, we've um, we've had a look at interrays. Now I think we need to get on to uh, chars and uh, strings. So let's just do it in the same program. Chars and strings. Okay, the first thing we need to do, we need to look at the brick. Before we build a wall, we're going to look at a brick. And the brick, in the old-fashioned days anyway, is um, called a char. Now, this is literally a single character, generally held within a um, single speech mark. It's, it's, it's a bit like an int, so it's a bit like a number. Um, it will come out as an ASCII, so this will be stored as an ASCII number and then be printed on the screen as an X. But it is a single block of memory and inside it it's got a, 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 a number representation which will be interpreted at a particular position as a character. So this is a char. Not really that useful to us uh, except in certain circumstances. I don't really use these very much but they are the brick which we're going to we're going to build into a wall. Let's just print this out see what it looks like. I'll put a bit more uh, help on this uh, stuff here so we can see what we're going to get out. And then we'll print out a character. And we'll just see what we end up with. So let's, let's give that a whiz. So we've got uh, a single character there. It's this character here. to break things up a bit. There we go. Okay, what's much more interesting and useful to us is when we get an array of these things, and this is the old-fashioned days, of course, what we can do is we can get an array of chars, like an array of integers. So there we go. This is an array of chars. So it's chars. It's a bag of oranges. Actually, it's not a bag of oranges this time. Think of oranges being integers. This is a bag of apples. Or a bag of... Let's make it a bag of bananas. And if you unskin the banana, there's the skin of the banana. Inside you get, in each banana, um, the banana itself, or the letter. This is a bag of bananas. Now, I don't need to say how big this is, because I'm immediately going to declare what all the letters are. Now the special thing about char arrays is that you always end them with a special character. These two letters here actually represent a single character called a null. Now, some people actually put a zero there, which will get interpreted as the same thing, but I generally put that. Now that's called the null character. Now you remember we talked earlier about overreading memory, or overwriting memory. All the problems with C++, the, the power comes from being able to get to memory directly. The problems come from being able to get to memory directly. So as we're going through, the, you know, the memory will say there's one little block of memory, the next 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 block of memory, and there'll be another block of memory following this. But this is a flag, this is like a checkered flag at the end of a Formula One race saying stop now, it's the end. And we can use that flag to do all sorts of things, such as what we're going to do in a second. Now, you might remember earlier when I did the ints, I, I kind of rewrote the same code many times. I kind of rewrote that code there. And I copied and pasted the same code just about there. Now that really breaks our own rules on functions. Whenever you do that, whenever you take a little routine and you copy it and you paste it, and it hardly changes, you really ought to be writing a subroutine. So I'm going to now write a subroutine to print out this array. So let's do that now. So, um, what can we call it? Printout name. Uh, we'll put in first name, which is this thing here. Did you notice? Oh, let's just quickly note that. This is a char of five. <clears throat> a, N, D, Y, and then the special character on the end. Five elements in this array. Um, obviously we now need to go and write that 
because we don't know what it is yet, we haven't written it. It's okay, let's go to the top of the program. Right, that's subroutine. Now it's not going to send anything back, so just say void. And it's going to take as an input a char array. Only when we've got five bricks in a bag, five bananas in a bag, we're going to start really calling it a string. This is a string array as opposed to a string type. Later on in C++, as C++ evolved, we got another thing called a proper string, and we'll talk about that very shortly. Okay, so this array comes in, and we can go whiz around that array and use that special null character as a marker to stop printing. So input string i, 0, 1, 2, 3, whatever, as long as that is not equal to the special null character, the flag, the checkered flag. So go around, do a lap of the race. Is the checkered flag there? No, we'll do another lap of the race. Mr. Sebastian Vettel. And now we can just print out the um, that character from the character array. And we'll put a new line on the end once we've printed out the five or whatever letters it was. Then we'll print out a new line. So, little for loop there, little counter thing. This is an array, it's an array of characters. We print A, N, D, Y. We then find the null character. As long as it's not the null character, do the loop. It is that character, so drop out and then print a new line. Oh, and again, just to reiterate, that is a single character represented by two um, computer entries, but it is in reality a single character inside the machine. Just an ASCII code. Okay, let's... Uh, Let's give that a whiz. Is this going to work? Let's just try it. Lovely. So then we've got uh, Andy coming out. Great stuff. Now, um, just to save having to type out this stuff here, for my next one, for my second name, I could type this out. <clears throat> oh, what did I do there? Did something wrong there. Let me just undo that, whatever I did. Um, what I could do for my second name, I'm going to set up a a new variable called second name. I could do this. Oh, I need another letter, don't I? So let's put the next letter in. Um, the problem is that's really, really, really tedious, and we, we we got a bit sick of typing all this stuff out. So we said, oh, "Hang on, tell you what we'll do. We'll we'll just type that, and C plus plus will know that that's actually an array of six characters, and without us really having to bother, it actually sticks in the null character at the end, without us having to try." Now, what I just did earlier. Was exactly equivalent to this, but it's just a, a like a shorthand for doing the same thing. So I can print this out using the same function, which is expecting a char array because this is a char array. Notice it says six, one, two, three, four, five, and assumed. Sixth character assumed. So it is a six element character array. And this should just print out because it, it is it is a character array, but we call it a string. Hopefully that'll print out. There we are, Andy James, lovely. Now later on in um, in C we, we we got a bit tired of having to work with these arrays and 
it got very difficult with memory because you could easily go past the null character and mess things up. So we came up, well, very clever people, much cleverer than me, who invented all of this, came up with a thing called a string. Now, logically, or even visually, this looks the same as the previous line. So that line looks like that line, but it is a different thing. This is a single thing. It's called an immutable thing. It's, 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 it's a single bucket. This is six buckets joined together by a piece or in a bag. And in each bucket we've got one letter. And then the null character. In this single bucket we have a whole piece of paper with Duncan written on it. So it is not the same as this, even though it looks the same. So uh, typically we'll just be using these later on, but uh, you need to remember this more old-fashioned construct for writing strings. This is a string type. This is a string array. It's different. Let me show you how different it is. If I use this printout name function, um, the third name, it won't like it. Look, doesn't like it. Let's put the semicolon. Okay, so it's not sure. It doesn't. No maxion function because in C each function this will be this function here printout name will be expecting a character array and it's not getting a character array. It's getting a single thing called third name, which is a string. Anyway, let's run it. Well, it won't. Let's just make sure it fails. Build failed. Okay. So what we need to do now is we need to do some overloading. We're going to have two functions with the same name. And they're going to do very similar things, but they're going to do different things. So let's just copy this. For, uh, no, we'll, we'll type it out so that we can see what's going on. Void printout name. It's, you're allowed to do this. Only we're not going to say char now. We're going to say string. Not char array, but string, a single thing. And the print and the printout's much easier in this case. It's just going to be I'll put the string, I'll put an end of line. Bang. Now this should work. Let's give it a whiz. I've typed it right. There we go. Andy James Duncan. Lovely. First name, second name, third name. So that's a little bit on strings. We'll do much more. Uh, we'll, now, some of you wondered about commas earlier. We were going to play with commas and char arrays in the next uh, lesson. But um, for now, oh, let's just reiterate this. Let's get rid of this. This is overloading. This is um, the stewardess's name if you've got an economy ticket. And this is the stewardess's name if you've got a business class ticket. So if you're economy, you go right. And if you're business class, you go left. But the stewardess is called Stephanie in both cases. But that's your economy ticket, char array. This is your business class ticket, string. Okay, see you next time.